Hello, George Romanich here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to talk about the composition of air that we breathe. And what we breathe is a mixture of gases. In that mixture, 78% is nitrogen N2, 21% is oxygen O2, and 1% are other gases. And these other gases are mostly argon, although it is not very important for weather, climate or life. But then we have some important, such as water vapor, H2O, such as carbon dioxide, CO2, such as methane, CH4, as well as nitrous oxide, N2O, the so-called laughing gas. These are also greenhouse gases. Let us now discuss these elements that are making up air. First of all, I told you that air is a mixture of gases. And in chemistry, we have mixtures and compounds. Mixture means that these elements came together, but they preserve their original chemical property. This is different compared to compounds such as kitchen salt, uh, sodium chloride, where both sodium and chloride on its own are toxic if you start digesting them. But when they come together, they lose their original chemical property and they get property of that compound that we call kitchen salt or, uh, or uh, sodium chloride. This is not the case in mixtures where properties of CO2, O2, N2 are preserved in the air. Let us start by discussing this gas that is mostly abundant in the atmosphere, and that's nitrogen in the form N2. Firstly, why is it in the form N2? That's because when we have two atoms of nitrogen, when they come close together, each of them likes to donate three electrons to the community of two of them. They then stick together through the so-called tri triple covalent bond, and they stay like that, and it's very difficult to take them apart. That also means that N2 is very stable in that form and it doesn't react with other gases in the atmosphere or rarely reacts. And that's also why it is not so important for weather and climate. The main source of N2 in the atmosphere are certain combustion processes and certain uh, decaying of uh, animals and plants. The main sink of N2 in the atmosphere are certain nitrogen fixing bacteria in plants and in uh, soil and ocean, and also a little bit of it gets de destroyed in lightning strikes. Now, O2 is oxygen in the form O2, fundamental for life on this planet. The main source of oxygen is the process of photosynthesis by which plants take CO2 and then release O2 as a byproduct. Sink of oxygen is, for example, breathing. Respiration uh, of animals, plants, and humans uh, is a sink of O2 and source of CO2. Another sink of oxygen in the atmosphere is uh, chemical weathering of rocks as well as growth of uh, shellfish and so on. Now, a little bit of N O2 uh, is uh, created by uh, destruction of N2O using ultraviolet light and so on, but uh, mostly it's the process of photosynthesis. And 1% are other gases, as I said, mostly argon, but argon is really not so important for weather and climate. A source of argon is typically radioactive decay of potassium-40 in the crust of uh, Earth. And then we have greenhouse gases. The most important gas for weather and climate is, of course, water vapor. That is because water vapor is the only gas here that can actually change phases. It can go from vapor gas to liquid water as well as ice, solid state. And when water is changing phases, there is huge amount of energy either released into the atmosphere or taken from the atmosphere or any system. And that is driving weather in many, many circumstances. CO2, CH4, N2O are greenhouse gases and their concentrations are increasing over the last several decades, but I will discuss that 
uh, in few minutes from now. Now I would like to show you a much nicer table of what I talked about here and you can take that table and uh, study composition of air and use it in some of your reports and so on. So the table is coming right now. Let us now discuss in more details greenhouse gases as well as ozone. In this graph you see atmospheric concentration of CO2 at Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii, United States. X-axis is years from approximately 1960 to the present. And Y-axis is concentration of CO2 in ppm. And ppm st stands for parts per million. How many molecules of CO2 you would find in one million molecules of air? And in this graph, you see two lines. Red line is monthly measurements of CO2 at Mauna Loa Observatory. And you see that the line is zigzagging. That's because in summer, we have more plants, more leaves that are consuming CO2. And we have small dip in concentration of CO2. In the cold part of the year, on the other hand, we have less plants. And therefore, we have small peak in CO2. But to smooth out these monthly varia variations, we go with the black line, which represents average over seven cycles. And therefore, you can see clearly increase of CO2 concentration, increase from approximately 320 parts per million that we had in 1960s to about 420, 418, 420 parts per million in 2023 when I'm recording this video. And if you look at this graph, you will, I hope, notice that this line, black line, is getting steeper and steeper, which means we are releasing more and more CO2 into the atmosphere. If we go back a few hundred thousand years ago, then we will see that we are exceeding historical records. Blue line is concentration of CO2 in ice core extracted from Vostok Station in Antarctica. And you can see that in the last 400,000 years, CO2 concentration was between approximately 300 ppm parts per million to approximately 200 ppm. But then here purple line is another ice core, low dome ice core over here. And then we had red line, which is Mauna Loa Observatory that I showed you in the previous slide. So you can see that currently we are peaking at approximately 420 ppm, which is much, much larger than historical records over the last few hundred thousand years. Methane, CH4, we once again see increase from approximately 1980s to the present. The curve is a little bit more complicated than for CO2, but nevertheless, it is increased. However, please keep in mind that here, unit is PPB, parts per billion, which means that there is way less methane, CH4, than CO2 in our atmosphere. If we now go to the laughing gas, N2O, nitrous oxide, we will see that these numbers are even smaller and units are PPB, parts per billion, which means there is even less nitrous oxide than methane, which in turn is uh, smaller in concentration with, than CO2. But nevertheless, we see very... 2,000 years later. steady trend of increasing since approximately 2000 up to now. We should also discuss ozone. Ozone is gas that is situated in the stratosphere between heights of about 20 kilo, between 20 kilometers and 40 kilometers in our atmosphere. Maximum concentration is about 32, 35 kilometers. But that's not so important now. What is important is that this gas is very, very, very fundamental for life on this planet because it absorbs high energy ultraviolet radiation. It absorbs approximately 99% of UV light and the 1% that passes through 
is the one that burns your skin. So every time you come back from beach alive, you should thank ozone. Ozone is uh, distributed, of course, around the globe, but a typical feature in ozone field is this ozone hole over the Antarctica uh, that forms typically in winter. And uh, this hole, ozone hole, is represented here with red color, and then uh, colder colors represent typical values of ozone, and that is given in the so-called Dobson units. What is Dobson unit? Well, it's the following. As I said, ozone is distributed between the level of 20 to 40 kilometers, let's say. Now, imagine you take all that ozone and you bring it together and you compress it to a layer of pure ozone, nothing else, just ozone. And then you take that layer and you bring it to Earth's surface. Thickness of that layer in millimeters is Dobson units. So you can see when we, when we have ozone hole, we have approximately 100 millimeters of that pure ozone layer. And then for regular values of ozone around our planet, it's between 400 and 500 Dobson units. At the end, I would like to conclude with discussing two other elements in our atmosphere that are very, very important. And these are the so-called CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons and aerosols. Aerosols are dirt, ash, sand, particles of soil, when you scratch your skin, your dead skin going into the air. So these are uh, particles suspended in the air. But before discussing them, let us first discuss CFCs. CFCs, some of you might not have heard of them, some of you did, are very complicated molecules and currently they are at very, very, very low concentration in air, but they have very, very bad property. Dual bad property. First, they are greenhouse gases. Second, they tend to destroy ozone. And actually, third bad property is they really don't have sinks into, in our atmosphere, which means when we release them, they stay there for a very, very long time. These molecules come into the atmosphere through various industrial processes. They are often found in freons that we use in refrigerators, we use in freezers, we use in air conditioning devices in cars, homes, and so on. They, some of them are also found in perfumes. Now, in many countries and many industries, they are banned from approximately 1980s, 1990s, depending on the region. However, some regions, some industries still use them to a certain extent. So their production is really declining in the recent years, but they still exist. Just to demonstrate their negative greenhouse gas effect, one molecule of CFC is as effective greenhouse gas as 40,000 uh, carbon dioxide molecules. It's 40,000 times more efficient than CO2. And they also destroy ozone. And now let us also discuss aerosols. Aerosols, as I said, are particles of dust, dirt, pollen, bacteria, anything in air. Oh, look. Another glorious morning. Makes me sick. So they are much bigger, of course, than molecules uh, and even bigger than atoms, but they play a very important role in health because some of them are uh, very bad, like heavy metals. It's not good to breathe, but they also play a very important role in weather and climate, particularly climate. Now, what is their role exactly? It's a little bit uh, question for research. We know they are important, but uncertainty of their importance is not very well understood. Now I explain myself. We know that certain aerosols tend to reflect solar radiation, which means they send back sun's energy into cosmos, which means they would tend to decrease temperature 
in the case of this global warming. But they also serve as cloud condensation nuclei, which means we would get more clouds or more smaller particles of water in the clouds. And it is not clear always how that affects energy balance of our planet, because they interfere with both long wave as well as short wave radiation. And more clouds is also bigger albedo of our planet. Albedo is percentage of uh, solar energy that gets reflected into the space. But more clouds also means more absorption of infrared radiation that our planet emits and so on. Now I am diverging into the part that I will cover in the next videos. And this video is already get getting too long, so I'll stop here. Saying that these are very important, these are very important as well as all other gases that I listed in the previous 15-20 minutes or so. So atmosphere is awesome. Now you understand the composition of air you breathe. You understand sinks and uh, sources of various elements in our atmosphere. And it's just amazing to know that. Don't you agree? Now I would like you to share this video with several friends, perhaps even enemies, no problems with that. Make sure you like, subscribe, and until next video, goodbye.